Soldering, soldering, soldering. Step right up. We are gonna talk about soldering today and specifically soldering battery leads by popular request. I'm John Holmes and stay tuned. All right, so we did a video a couple of weeks back on soldering, or maybe it's gonna be a month or two by the time all the videos roll out, but y'all had requested soldering on to a battery. Specifically, you wanted to know about soldering on your connector. And I thought that is actually a really good idea because once you know how to solder, soldering's basically soldering. So this is sort of an extraneous video. However, soldering a battery is a little more precarious because you have power leads to deal with and if you don't do it in the right order, you can screw things up. Uh, I, I have screwed up batteries before doing it wrong. So I speak from experience in saying, if you don't know what you're doing, watch this video and it will help out. So we are going to first cover the items that we need for soldering. Obviously we need the battery that we're gonna be switching the connector on. We will need the connector along with the heat shrink that shall go on the battery. We also need a soldering iron for the soldering job. And we will need soldering, which one of my helpers will need to grab the, the roll of solder for me because I forgot that on the table. And definitely safety glasses, probably wire cutters slash strippers, something to make the job easier, this little jig that holds our battery connector. And then finally, something to shrink our heat shrink, which would be the uh, lighter in this case, or a heat gun. And now we have solder. And I will note that this is the 0.032 diameter solder from Holmes Hobbies. You can find it in a link down below. I like the smaller diameter because it's a lot easier to control the amount of solder that we put into it. And it is also lead free. It's a 4% solder with the remainder as 10. And you don't have to worry about getting solder burned into your fingers. Maybe having some solder fumes, you know, some lead fumes getting into your face. Don't have to worry about that. I am a big fan of no lead in my solder these days. But this one is pretty easy to use because it has a 4% silver content. All right, so that is all of our equipment. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my iron. This is a Hakko 888, FX888, and I have it set to about 450 degrees Celsius so we don't overheat our amalgam and make it kind of a bad solder joint. So that's preparation, getting into it, making sure everything is nice and neat. You wanna make sure that wherever you're working is comfortable as can be. So what I'm gonna do first is work on this XT60 connector. We're switching out from EC3s to the XT60s. And the first thing that I do when I work with these is I turn these little solder cups to where they both face in one direction. And I do believe Ty from Teakin Racing gave me that. And uh, yeah, just a good little tip. Thank you, Ty. So we're gonna pull these both in one direction. Hopefully I get it right. And these are being a little stiff, but it still worked. Our orient, yeah, our, our orientation will, will change depending on which way these wires go. So I'll go ahead, yep, that'll work. Just wanna make sure the cups are in the right direction. So next step, make sure your glasses are clean and that you're wearing them. You wanna make sure you're wearing them. So what we need to do is remove this plug from the battery, the old plug. And what I could do is just chop this off. What you may be tempted to do is just chop this off. But what you will do is you will short the battery together. That's a mistake that I've had on some older batteries where they had uh, PCB terminations inside. It actually, pow, popped a trace, dead battery. Uh, of course, I could solder, so I was able to fix it, no big deal. But what I'm gonna do is one lead at a time, just one. It can be somewhat fiddly when you have a large set of cutoffs like this, trying to get it in between those wires, but only one. We're only gonna work with one side of the battery at a time. Then we strip our wire, which this stripper, and it says 10 gauge, but that looks a little smaller than 10 gauge. Don't matter. Now we have a bare copper lead in this case. We have to pre-tin, they call it pre-tinning for some reason because we are tinning before the actual soldering operation. But essentially, we want to add solder to the end of that wire and soak it in real good. Let's see if we can do it where the camera can see what we're doing as well. That's gonna be difficult. But first, a little bit in between the iron tip. And you can see there, we got some on the tip of the wire. In between the iron tip and the wire, and then we don't want to put the solder directly onto our tip because it'll eat away at our tin plating and we'll run our tip over time. So that is why we don't put it directly onto the tip. 
and once we get the wire heated up, we can actually just feed this onto the wire itself and it should soak in. Again, it's, I'm trying to do this so the camera can see it. And, and that's kind of hard, but, but you can see now it's all heated up. I'm just adding it to the top on the wire to the item that we are soldering. And there we go, that's pretend. It's got a nice even coat all the way around. It looks like all of our wire strands are within the pre-tinning area. We got one little wire here on the side. I'm just gonna kind of tack it down so it joins the rest of them. There we go, so this one's pre-tinned. You might be inclined to chop off the other lead and pre-tin it right now. Don't do it. Resist, for sure. Don't do it. All right, always remember to put your heat shrink on before you solder the joints together. Now what I need to do is pre-tin my connector. And this little Mr. Jig from Hobby King is pretty handy for connectors because it's got the little clamp. But you can also just put a heavy weight on top of your connector just to keep it from moving around the table. So I'm adding heat to the connector. I'm gonna kind of swipe a little bit in between the iron tip, and push it around just to get our heat flowing. See if I can do it down here so y'all can watch it happen. There we go. So now we got heat onto that little, little connector and I can just push solder directly onto the connector and it just wicks right in. That's what we wanna see is a good, a good wicking. Not to be confused with a well-behaved witch. All right, so already, uh, already flowing since the iron had a little bit of solder left over on it flowed very well, so eh, a little more. Like I said, I like the really thin diameter because it doesn't just blob up really fast. It takes a, a, a good bit of pushing to get enough solder wire in there. Good bit of pushing, that's my next band name. All right. So we have our two items pre-tinned and all we'll need to do is double check our polarity. Double and triple check polarity because you don't want to get it backwards and fry some stuff. And now we will basically just add heat. And sometimes you gotta add a little bit more solder to your iron tip just so it'll flow the heat. You know, my iron tip's looking kind of dirty right now, but I may be able to just use a little bit of abrasive action back and forth like that, get it heated up. Eh, nope, it's too dirty. It's not transferring heat. Gotta have a clean iron, clean, clean. Get them all aligned. And you can, you can see that this is kind of fiddly. And this is when having an extra third hand tool could come in handy to uh, kind of push that wire down. All right, so this is the kind of trouble that you will probably have. So I'm trying to get that heat wick down and it's just not doing it, it's just not doing it. So what I gotta do is add a teeny bit of solder in between my iron and the wire. Let's see, let me try again, let me try again. Is that showing up on the uh, tight camera there, Dallas? Excellent. All right, so we got it pinned together. I need to add a little bit just to get my heat flow going. I need a little bit of heat transfer. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Now that we get a little bit of heat transfer on there, we can use weight. Yeah, and it just pushes right in. And like I said, this is kind of fiddly. Normally you'd have third hands, but this is what you would, you would want is at least one of your objects there we are. Now we got full heat flow on both the bullet connector itself and the wire. There we go. And I probably held that heat on for a little long, but these XT60 connectors have a pretty good plastic in the injection molded body. It's not very liable to melt. If I had gone that long on a Deans, it probably would have melted the body of the Deans, although Deans don't take as much heat to solder, so I probably wouldn't have needed to be on it that long anyway. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. All right, we have it on there. This is a nice, uh, just a, a nice joint all the way around. It doesn't look cold. We have pretty much full flow all the way around it, but not too much that it's, you know, kind of boiling off, so to speak. We gotta insulate now. Gotta, gotta insulate before we go to the next one. I am going to keep pounding it into your head. You gotta insulate before you go to the next one. And we're gonna use this nasty old bupane, bupane, <laughs> butane flame. We'll just call it a bu bupane now. This butane flame, which leaves a lot of nasty stuff on there. Woo, it's hot. I wonder why it's so hot. Hmm. Yeah, be careful when you're using a lighter. That's why I like using a heat gun. You can see I, I actually melted some of that connector there. It'll be fine, not a big deal, but be careful. 
learn from my mistakes. All right, so this is insulated. We have number one insulated, and now we can cut number two, the positive lead. It doesn't really matter if you go positive first, negative first, as long as you insulate as you go along. And give a little twist to the wire jacket so that we can kind of do an even cut all the way around and not cut our conductive strands if possible. It's nice when it's a silicon jacketed wire. They're usually pretty easy to cut with a sharp tool. So we're back where we started with the first one. We want to put a little bit clean, clean tip. We want to put a little bit of solder in between our wire and our tip just to get the heat transfer going. And again, having a third hand tool would be ideal, but you don't always have those. You may not always have that available to you. And being able to freehand in air like this is, is actually a good skill to have. Say you're out on the trail and you have your little, uh, your little butane soldering iron. They're pretty dang handy. There, good enough. All right, next step, insulate. Make sure you insulate. It's gonna be my band, my band's first song. Our hit single, be sure to insulate. All right, so the next problem you'll probably have is that your wire may not quite reach. Say, you know, you got it turned this way. Oh no, it doesn't reach. Sometimes you just have to maybe turn your battery a little sideways and get that lead kind of shorter in a sense so that it falls down in there. You will also, if you solder a lot, you will get hands that can handle a lot of heat. It's kind of a skill that's a useless skill unless you're also doing a lot of soldering. But, uh, you know, this wire is gonna get really hot underneath my finger on the left hand here that's holding down the red wire. Uh, but I can take pretty high heats on the fingers usually. All right, I don't like the way that this is looking. I'm gonna add a little bit more. This is really dangerous right now because the wire's under tension and it's gonna to wanna to flip up and spray my face with solder. This is why we wear safety glasses. So I'm just adding a little bit more solder. It, it just looked like the heat wasn't quite flowing. And again, I'm taking a little bit more time than I would like. There we go. Nice, fully flowed joint. You have to hold it still until it is ready and solidified, solid, solidified. And we're done soldering. So we'll turn off our iron. Always remember to not burn your house down. Pro tip, don't burn your house down. Um, I usually wait just a few seconds before I slide this heat shrink up because if we do it too fast, it's gonna shrink up as we get to right here and it may pinch down too soon. And that's always a bummer because then you gotta either use electrical tape to go back or you gotta unsolder it, put fresh heat shrink on, solder it back, and then wait, of course, and not make the same mistake again. So we're just gonna push this all the way down. We can take it out of our Mr. Jig helping tool. And I put, I put a little force with my finger. I push it down towards the end where we want it to go. And I'm actually gonna flip this upside down so we're not torching on the opposite side. Be sure you don't burn your fingers if you're using a butane lighter. So there we go. Our heat shrink is pretty much cool now. We have a decent job. Uh, you know, we don't see, you get a tight uh, shot there. We don't see any places where we could have a dead short kind of at the base if you don't get that insulation slid all the way down. And they do have a little gap to where you can actually get it in between the, the plug body and the plug itself on the inside. But if you don't slide it down far enough, then you'll have a little problem where, you know, say a tool or something and your, your uh, kit could fall across it and short it, but we got those down all the way. She's ready to go. And uh, let's make sure that I didn't somehow kill it. I believe I have a battery tester in my pocket. Look at there. Oh, get her. Get her together the right way. And we look at the voltage, eight volts, 0 0.01 volts between them, 4.09 and 4.08 for each cell. So it's looking like it is still fully charged. I didn't screw up the battery somehow. Um, assuming we plug this in and it still works too. It's not likely that you would ever screw up a battery just soldering a plug on, but weirder things have happened in the world, so. I think that should conclude. If you do have any further questions about the process or anything else that you would like to see soldering specifically, then let me know in the comments. Hit a like, subscribe, and all that stuff I reckon too. If you like this, let us know or don't let us know. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.